Hey, it's Thomas, and welcome to part two of coding slash refactoring session on the rapid prototyping IoT library that is meant to be framework at some point. And uh, by the way, this is day 39 of 100 days of code in IoT challenge. Let's get started. So uh, the point where we finished yesterday, let me quick, quickly remind you that was on the Wi-Fi manager. It was on the Wi-Fi manager. Um, and that was the test for the Wi-Fi manager that forced us to build, maybe not this one, to build timeout future. Timeout future or future timeout um, which is a specific type of future that is getting rejected if the underlying future is pending, still pending after a certain amount of time. Okay, so um, I have explained the plan for the implementation. It is now already done and I'm going to go through it, no worries. And as far as I remember, I also had the names for the tests, right? Now I have the tests implemented as well. But um, yeah, as you can see, so what we had is the timeout future. It resolves with underlying future value if that future resolved before timeout, right? So that's how it works. So future takes the timeout future takes another future. And if this taken future, right, the underlying future resolves before the timeout or rejects before the timeout, the timeout future is just going to return like either resolve or reject with exactly the same result. However, on the pending part, if the underlying, the given future is pending after timeout, then the timeout future is going to reject, right? So this whole future created out of this uh, timeout future that uh, took the, the, the other future, right, is, is now going to, like, you know, contain part of the behavior of the underlying future and the part of the behavior that rejects after timeout, okay? So that was the, that was the point of introducing this timeout future. And uh, um, I had to introduce it because on the Wi-Fi connection, on the method connect, we wanted to have a timeout as it was before in the core library. We, we could specify the timeout after which, regardless of the outcome, regardless of the result, the, the connection, the, the, the connection attempts stopped, right? So that's how it, how it worked. And I just wanted to retain this functionality and I've managed to do it, but yeah, I'm going to go through it. However, before, um, another reminder on the main objective of this whole refactoring session, right? So for those who haven't watched the previous part, I strongly recommend to do so because without uh, watching the previous video, it's going to be hard to like move to understand what I'm doing, understand all the, all the steps that I'm doing, right? But maybe not all of them because I'm going to start uh, refactoring uh, another class, a new class. So on that, at least you will probably uh, understand it if you watch the future videos about the futures I mean okay cool um, so yeah main objective switch to futures on everything right so on the Wi-Fi manager on HTTPS client mainly and on the set clock and additional steps move all the code to common uni uno library which is this um, the, the rapid prototyping library that I'm building and add unit tests where possible also doing that already in progress, right? We tried to do sort of TDD yesterday and uh, a switch to auto typing because this is about event dispatcher to auto guess the types that you provide to on and once methods. But yeah, we, we probably, if we have time, I'm going to, I'm going to show you uh, how to do it. Okay. Right. So these are the goals. And now let me show you what I've changed to yesterday's code because off camera, I did some extra work to speed everything up. I don't want to um, make, I don't want to have too many videos on this subject of coding, refactoring and uh, um, building this, this IOT, uh, this IOT library. 
Um, the reason simply is I would like to start building some, you know, nice, cool uh, devices. And, but still, I would like to use that library that's gonna speed up my development. Yeah, but let me, let me go through what I have done. Okay, so on the timeout future, because I've already started this subject, now what we have is um, I figured out how to do with it, uh, how to do how to solve the problem with the milis. So if you remember from yesterday, the milis function uh, had to be passed here to the create timeout future, and this is not very convenient given that milis is existing on the Arduino environment, which is the embedded environment, right? It is existing there and. There won't be a case ever the, where there is no milis function, okay? And I had to do a small workaround. So there is some additional, you see, block of code that I had to add to the production code, something I don't usually do and I, do, I don't really like doing. Where, you know, that with, when, when you have the case where you have unit tests forcing you to change the production code, I'm not say I'm not saying it's bad. I don't know much about how this is professionally done with embedded uh, programming, but yeah, I've got mixed feelings about uh, about this. Anyway, um, what I've done is this workaround, and I have a native folder in here with the native milis function. So yeah, I was thinking for all those native native functions, all the native objects as well. Um, I could create a separate library with sort of mocks or like something that imitates, like fakes, imitates the behavior uh, that happens on the board. And uh, that was the first step. I did some experiments, to be honest, with the, um, the other libraries out there. There is one a library called Arduino Fake, but um, I think that was too big, too big and complex maybe not complex, but yeah, just for my simple ca case with milis, it was a too big library to be used. And also that introduced a different, different uh, mocking functionality. So that, yeah, I, I felt like that, that just, you know, introduced more confusion. So I didn't go that way, right? That was, by the way, that was off the camera. So you haven't seen then, sorry, uh, you haven't seen uh, this, sorry, but you know, that was the decision I've made. So now the code is going to be a bit clearer, okay? So yeah, so we've got that uh, milis thing here sorted like that. And that's also what I've changed in the future uh, tests. So for the future tests, I'm, I'm using, uh, sorry, uh, that was, oh uh, yeah, that was for the test. So yeah, for the test, I'm not really using it. I could use it, but I'm not really use, uh, using it. I just passed it as a function somewhere there. Um, let me show you, it is, it is here, okay, it is here, All right, so I pass it like that because apparently if you include it in the production code and in the tests, I mean this native milis HPP, I had an issue with compilation, with the linking, so something uh, that seemed, seems like platform IO issue. So I just, I just for this particular case, I just, I wanted to move on. So I did it that way. So we have a small duplication. Right. Okay. So yeah, so the timeout future is, uh, is ready. And we have to, one template specialization to handle the input, the void input. And this is because when you create this new future, which is a timeout future, you need to pass the poll function. And if the I is non void type, the input is non-void type, you need to take this parameter here. Um, or otherwise, if the, e, if the i is a void type, then you are not allowed to do that, right? Shouldn't be done like this. So there is no input here in the brackets. So that's what I've done to specialize this. And the rest is all the same. Um, another thing that you may have already spotted is this new static method reject on the, ah, oh, sorry, that's not this one. No, that's all fine. Because yeah, I introduced reject on the, on the future. I'm going to show you in a second. So yeah, this is all fine. That's just a standard reject on the async result, right? So yeah, what happens here 
Um, I think I've already explained it, but yeah, let me tell you. So if uh, the timeout is given, then the, there is a future time, right? That is determined, that is going to be assigned to a uh, timeout time. And that is captured by the poll function in the next future, in the future that we return. And then inside this function, we run milis. And that milis from the actual time is compared with the milis plus the timeout milliseconds, right? So if the milis reaches that time, right, and the future, the underlying future, the one that we have given to this function is still pending, we reject. And all the other cases, we just return future poll, which is again this underlying the given future here, right? And it's exactly the same behavior for for the create timeout. For the tests, I I covered both specializations. So for the resolve, I've got um, oh here is the new here is the new static method on the future. So let me show you in a second. So yeah, so here I create timeout future, two timeout futures, right? One is with the void and int, the second one is int and int to cover two specializations. And uh, and yeah, I just, you know, uh, I, I, I wait for those uh, futures to be not pending anymore. And then I check if they are resolved and the value is expected, right? Because they should immediately resolve so that is the case that resolves, right? So this this future is resolved already. And uh, that's why we should get resolved, right? The, the timeout functionality shouldn't take place. Okay. And yeah, for this one, for the static method, I created them as sort of the helper methods to construct, uh, you know, already rejected or, 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 or already resolved future uh, quickly, easily, right? Because, you know, it's really a matter of just passing an output for the, for the, I mean, this is really an, in, this is an input for the, uh, sorry, no, that's output. It, it is about just, you know, constructing a future that captures the output and resolves it immediately, right? So this is like immediately resolving future and this one is immediately rejecting future, right? But you know, for this case, you need to pass error instead of the output. There is no output, it's it's a, a, an error, right? So this is what I introduced there. So it's easier to just construct immediately resolving future. Why this is the case? Um, yeah, one reason is this one, right? In the tests, but there is also reason uh, for the production code. There's something in the production code that I've done. So, so it's not just for the tests, okay? Yeah, so that was for resolve. This one is for the, this is the timeout error case, right? So as you can see, we have pending. It's gonna be always pending, right? So we're creating a timeout future and here we pass create future, okay? Create future is also new. It's also something I introduced, a helper function that allows you to create futures without specifying the generic the generic types, okay, the generic parameters, because they're going to be auto detected based on the callback function, the C++ lambda function that's passed here, right? Because if the function, if the, the poll function, the lambda C++ poll function given to the future re, uh, returns async result with a specific type and take a specific argument like here, it is going to extract those types and construct a future with them. So let me show you how, I, how I've done it. It's not super clear to, to, to read yet because yeah, I need to read a, a bit about uh, refactoring and making the meta programming code clearer, right? More clear. So this is essentially, it's really just reflecting what I've done with and then. As you, if you remember from the future, from the from the videos about about futures, so here um, I'm just using this function traits to uh, check what is the first argument that is given to to the to this lambda C++ lambda function, the C++ lambda poll function that is given to the future, and the result type, right? Some extra work had to be done around the number of arguments and uh, I had to create my own trait 
to extract the uh, result type from the async result, right? But I'm not gonna bother you with the detail with details on that. What you need to remember is this one is the easiest way to create a future, okay? To create the future based on on polling, right? So you just pass the poll function here, right? And yeah, for this case again, right? We return pending. So this this future is never gonna resolve or reject. And this future is not going to resolve or reject either. But because this was given as a future to the create timeout future, timeout future adds this extra functionality that rejects it after the timeout, right? And the timeout is set to 50 milliseconds. So that code should, work, should just run for 50 milliseconds. And after that, we should get is rejected as true and get error should return the error future timeout, okay? Right, and the last the last case for create timeout future is just rejecting before the timeout, right? So if the underlying future rejects before the timeout, we just uh, reject with the same error that it's been rejected with, right? In this case, it's just expected error. So that's what we confirm in here, right? So I've, I've done that. And because I've done that, I also... Um, yeah, by the way, you see, I changed the format a little bit, so it's not future underscore test anymore. Now it's future dot test. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, show me a Wi-Fi connector. So Wi-Fi connector is not Wi-Fi manager anymore. I, I renamed it because I thought, I thought, you remember the even dispatcher part. This is completely separate. That violated the single responsibility uh, principle, I, I think. And there should be a separate class or separate function that keeps, you know, a track on the status of Wi-Fi connection and tries to connect if it's disconnected or something like that. So I removed that piece of functionality from there. I still keep this um, this facade, which is now adapter. So I keep it, right? Yeah, that, that's a bit tricky, right? You see, it's uh, using virtual methods and uh, I did some research on that. There is a huge debate whether to use virtual methods in embedded environment or not. And uh, um, they, they slow the code a little bit. The code is a little bit slower. There is more uh, processor cycles, I think, when you use virtual methods. But because this is a prototyping tool, and uh, I'm also trying to improve, but not immediately, right? I don't need to um, read, you know, uh, a, a, a books about uh, what, what is what is the better solution before I implement that. So I, I decided to just, you know, stick to, to the solution I started with, right? So we're gonna keep this uh, Wi-Fi adapter and I've got this ESP8266 Wi-Fi adapter where you pass Wi-Fi class and Wi-Fi multi and they just, you know, sort of like proxies them, but, you know, bring them together at the same time. So that can be used in the Wi-Fi adapter. And, you know, the reason I, I did that is mainly for tests. It is mainly for tests. Also, you can say this was just following the design patterns and the um, solid principles, right? This is dependency inversion, what I've done. For embedded environment, it might be not the solution, the best solution, but I still, um, I just, I don't want to spend too much time on it. If I, at some point of time, when uh, when using this this code, um, the the performance happened to be, you know, not enough, too slow or too much memory consumed, I will look into this again and try to refactor it to be better and more efficient, okay? So, so yeah, so we use the, 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 the adapter now and that adapter is also, um, that helped me to have the, the test on the desktop, right? So I don't need to do integration test in the embedded environment for the Wi-Fi adapter, uh, sorry, for the Wi-Fi connector, but, um, I still have one, but I could test it also at the unit level here. Okay. Right. And uh, about the functionality, about the functionality. So um, I've just realized I don't need those. So if I connected and disconnected event are not required anymore and even dispatcher is not required here either. Right, and what happens in here? 
what happens in here. So um, I, I introduced a new method at access point. So that just, you know, adds the access point on Wi-Fi multi. And for the connect, what happens for the connect? So um, you can give the timeout in milliseconds. That is, uh, as a default, is set to 15 seconds. I check for the get mode, so it wasn't here before. And only if the mode is different than Wi-Fi STA. So this is mainly for the cases where the Wi-Fi is switched off and you want to switch it on before you're trying to connect. And then I have this create timeout future and create future. So this future works in a way that it keeps checking for, um, it starts from the status and if status is connected, we immediately resolve. So that is, uh, that is the first check and the second one is the run and run checks um, for, um, yeah, runs ju just run, uh, run the run method on, on the Wi-Fi multi with another timeout. This is a different timeout. This is a slightly, slightly smaller timeout because I looked into the Wi-Fi multi and it looks like you can specify the timeout there, but the timeout that the run method is partly blocking. So I thought if I specify a smaller timeout and have a higher timeout for the entire operation, we can run this in a non in a less blocking way. It's not really gonna be non-blocking way, but less blocking way. So you know, in the meantime, we can have something else that can do something in the meantime when the uh, the board is trying to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, so that's what I've done. So we have just resolve and pending. We don't have the w, uh, WL status uh, returned by this future anymore. You see, this is just void void. So the way this works now is it is going to resolve if it can connect or reject if there is a timeout and the timeout future is taking care of it. And for the second overload that I introduced, right? So you see this SSID and password are no longer in the constructor. You can add them, you can add the access point either through that access point method or you can run connect where you pass SSID and password and that just, you know, tries to add the access point that can fail if you provide invalid SSID, for example, too long or the, the, the password is violated or something like this. It doesn't mean it's incorrect for the Wi-Fi, it's just like if when it's completely wrong, when it's in a wrong format. And then we reject, right? And otherwise, I just do uh, this connect and uh, just, you know, follows this, uh, this process, okay? Okay, and for the disconnect, I just uh, emit, I just, you know, this is like a simple proxy to the Wi-Fi, okay? You know, it's not the perfect implementation of the adapter pattern. I know that um, maybe it's, it's probably, it should be introduced when, uh, in the moment where I add a support for the new microcontroller. So I need like, you know, adapters for the different microcontrollers, but um, that was done uh, for the sake of the tests. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick, stick to it. Uh, yeah, I said it too many times already. So yeah, let, let me just explain the test, how the tests work and we can move to the code and start implementation finally. I see it's, it's, over 25, it's, it's almost 25 minutes. So uh, I'm talking too much, right? But I'm just trying to explain what I've done and uh, and how this, this library is going to work, okay? So yeah, so Wi-Fi connector tests, you see this Wi-Fi adapter mock that we have in here. And uh, we have few cases. So we have one case that test connect resource if Wi-Fi is already connected. Okay, let me show you which part of code that covers. So that's the Wi-Fi connector. And that covers this bit of code, okay? So this is where we already connected. So it should resolve straight away, right? So that's what it covers. So we expect get mode to return Wi-Fi STA and we expect the status to, to return connected. And then we expect that the future is resolved. Then we have test on the uh, connect resolves if Wi-Fi is not already connected, but manages to connect. So that covers this bit, okay? So if Wi-Fi run returns uh, uh, WL connected, then we resolve. So again, just checking for the, uh, just, you know, setting the mocks and expecting the calls to get mode, to status, to run. 
and we ask, we expect the future result to be resolved. The next one is test connect says Wi-Fi mode to Wi-Fi ST if different mode has been set. That covers this scenario. This is just additional piece of functionality. Maybe not the pe best place to, to, to be in the connect. So a subject for refactoring later, maybe, right? It's a bit violates the, the single responsibility pattern. And this test connect rejects with timeout error if Wi-Fi connection cannot be established. Okay, so this is the case where we have a timeout. So for the for the status, we just return disconnected, and for the run, we just keep returning disconnected. So it's not gonna, it's never gonna connect. We expect to get rejected timeout, a future timeout. And this one is it checks the credentials provided, right? If the credentials are correct. So that's that's this bit, right? If this returns true, so we have a correct credentials and this one is for the incorrect credentials. So that, that covers this bit that returns the rejection, right? And this is, this is, this is, this is it. This is essentially it, what I have done. And I also moved the logging here. So it's easier to debug now. And if I have to debug, you will see, I will be using a log library. So nice. Um, so yeah, um, is it? Oh, this is not really it. Sorry, this is not really really it. I also added integration test for the Wi-Fi connector that runs in the embedded environment. So I've got this covered as well. The way you specify the SSID and password is through the the build flags. Okay, so build flags, you need to pass the flag for test integration and for my S for the SSID and password, this is how those integration tests are run. So we've got this, this constant in here, right? Uh, the, the compiler one. So that's what happens and we have the callback mock and this, this actually runs in the board with ESP8266 Wi-Fi Multi with the adapter. So it's sort of also testing uh, the integration with the with the Wi-Fi Multi and uh, the build-in Wi-Fi, the ESP8266 Wi-Fi wi class. And here we expect the mock call that is here, right? So we expect the Wi-Fi connector connect with the SSID and password. We give 60 seconds to connect. And uh, I expect this future to just, you know, call some callback once it's once it's done. And uh, I do this approach with the yield, checking for the pending and while, and we do assert true if it's if it's resolved, right? So we we cover all of this. So it's sort of like integration because it also checks if the and then callback has been called, and uh, the future result is resolved, right? So that's cover that covers a little bit more layers. It's not perfect though. This is not perfect because that shouldn't be on the loop in the loop in the while loop. That should be done with the executor, but we don't have executor yet. I'm going to implement that once I finish with the once I finish with all the classes. Okay. So yeah. So to prove that those tests are working. I've got my ESP8266 connected here to my computer and I'm going to run all of those tests. So I'm going to do PIO test and let's see if these tests are going to pass. So we're running the desktop first and remember I changed some code so that might influence it. Hopefully the result is going to be success though. Yes. Okay. So you got passed. And now we now it, it deploys the code to the board. Okay, it's running now. So the Wi-Fi connector is running. I'm gonna just you know wave this. So yeah, so the Wi-Fi signal uh, has been called, and as we can see, all passed, all green, right? So everything working, everything working well, and from this point. I can start. I can start doing, uh, you know, implementing the features in the next piece of functionality. What we're gonna pick as the first one is 
set clock. Why set clock? Because it's small and, and simple functionality. We can even write the test for it. Right, so how the set clock works at the moment, it works with the use of timer, but is callback based. Okay, so to get notified that the clock has been synchronized, right? Just a reminder, this synchronize the clock with the on the device with the time server. So we, we will get the actual date on the device. And when this happens, the callback that you pass to this function is going to be called, right, with the boolean. And you can also pass the timeout uh, with milliseconds, so the boolean was to tell whether it's been synchronized or not, right? So the true meant synchronized and the false meant, you see, not synchronized after the timeout. So we're going to turn this into uh, into the, the the futures, right? We're going to change the return type from void to future and get rid of the on clock set. So let's start from creating the test. Uh, let's think if we can run this in the native environment. Probably not. Probably not because the config time. I'm pretty sure that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist in the native environment. So I'm not gonna take uh, that risk again. <laughs> And we do, and we do the uh, the embedded environment straight away. So this is gonna be more like an integration test. I'm not really gonna call it integration yet, but we'll see. It's probably integration because we also test the code from the. Yeah, maybe it's it's better to call it integration. So we will have something like set clock. Remember, I'm check changing the convention to underscore. So that's gonna be set clock dot test dot integration dot cpp okay so we have set clock integration cpp and wi-fi connector wi-fi connector uh, we're just going to copy most of the functionality most of the includes and the uh, the compiler uh, specific uh, code so mocks probably not wi-fi connector no just arduino gtest and time dot h that is gonna be needed right and uh, and if at the end right so this is an integration test this is an integration test and let's think about the test cases here so this one also gonna be with the timeout future with the timeout future so we'll have one future that has this as a poll callback Right, but instead of returning true or false, it's gonna be pending and and the resolve. So potentially this could be this could be void void, but I wouldn't make it void void void. I would make it returning the actual time. That would be nice, wouldn't it? To return the time t maybe time t as the return type right that's unsigned long so i think that's long okay so i think this is just the number of that's, uh, that's probably the epoch time after synchronization so that's something we could do and let's do it so so here i'm just gonna do test i use the test macro and uh, i'm gonna do test set clock and test it right and what cases we've got here so one case is gonna be uh, maybe the, the positive one, right? The positive scenario. So test it synchronizes with time server. Test it synchronizes with time server. Not sure if there are other conditions that, yeah, maybe if, uh, if Wi Fi connection. If, if there is internet connection, maybe something like this. If there is internet connection. Or maybe uh, this is maybe not the context of it. So not if there is an internet connection, but if a test it resolves, maybe that's what we do. Test, test it resolves with new time, with actual time, actual time, if synchronization has been done before timeout okay so this is gonna be the the, the scenario here 
and uh, yeah we also need to include this set clock let me rename that now to the new convention so set clock like that and we'll have yeah set clock hpp here nice okay and uh, so we're gonna run set clock set clock uh it's probably also gonna need the rename here so we can follow the convention so set clock and now there is the moment to change the interface of it right the signature so we will have set clock we don't really want to pass timer so we'll have time h is gonna stay but timer that should be there by the way is not gonna be there and on clock set is not gonna be there either so we'll just have the timeout in milliseconds we can keep it set to 60 seconds as a default so we will do set clock and uh, maybe we keep the default timeout and what i'm going to do is to run and then this is obviously not even gonna build at the at the moment so i will need to change the code and then and we should get time t time t let's just call it t right and uh, is there anything we could do about this time t uh, i don't think we could except for checking oh yeah we could more or less check if it's the same as the as the actual time right is it gonna be the now yeah that should be now so it's gonna be something similar something close to now so it seems like the mocks are actually gonna be useful because that's that's the best way of of verifying if something has been called in, inside the callback um, so in that case what I'm gonna need to do is to use this one again but this time is going to this one this is going to be called with um, you know what I'm not sure if these tests are really the test files are run separately so I may need to so I may need to rename the callback and callback mock, but we'll see. Let's let's see if if we get an error in a second, right? So call is gonna take time t, right? So that's the difference. And here we're just going to create the callback mock. Mock. We're going to pass it here as a reference, and I'm just gonna do mock dot call with t so this is what's going to happen this is what's going to happen and and we need expectation before so that will be here expect call call and that is mock call we need to use the um so that's gonna be here uh using namespace test test i can't remember testing or test testing so that's testing and we want to check if it is the same as uh yeah that's uh, roughly the same so i need to do the uh, something that i i've done somewhere with the timeout already or i have uh, with the timer or not I don't have the timer test in here, do I? Yeah, not sure why it's missing because I remember implementing it. Oh, it's probably on a different branch. It is on a different branch. So uh, I need to look into the documentation. So that will be Google mock cheat sheet. Very useful one. Because we need to we need to verify two conditions at once. So that will be on the is it here on the or the cookbook? Maybe it was a cookbook. Hang on, multiple with in range. Okay, then we have something like in range. In range 
Let me check what is inner range. Uh, says the first argument of inner range must be not zero and must be less than the second argument. Okay, so maybe we could do in range. Let me try to do in range. So you do in range in range. Is it something like that? Oh, there is no there is no such such a thing. Call I'm pretty sure there was EQ. I oh, know, okay, yeah, let's try it. In range. And the first one is going to be EQ and the second one also going to be EQ. So here we have something like a millis and let's let's give it minus uh, 60 seconds maybe. And I will try to decrease it later on. And this one is going to be millis plus 60 seconds. So that's how the expectation is going to look like. So we expect the call to be called with this value. And uh, um, to, yeah, that needs to return the future. And uh, here we're going to need to pull that future. So we're going to do something like that. Oh, you know what? I might not need to have a callback mock. I'm just thinking. Yeah, it's not required. Because now when we resolve with the when we resolve with the time t, I could essentially check it here. So I will have a simple assertion. So assert EQ and that will be on the future the result get value. I need to deference it though. And the second argument, the expected one, is going to be... Okay, so this is where it becomes problematic, isn't it? Right. So, I'm not sure how to specify... Oh, yeah, that was there was something. Asset greater equal, we can do something like this, right? Assertions. So, we have asset... Is there such a thing as an asset? Oh yeah, okay. Not equal, equal. I can't remember right now. If I go to asset equal, can I get the different one? Okay, so we have less equal and great equal. Okay, so that's gonna be less equal. Future uh, results. So that's uh, the first one is less than the millis plus 60 seconds and the second one is going to be minus but greater or equal right something like that okay so now we don't need the mock simplifies it isn't it really simplifies it so yeah we don't need mocks yes yeah, so what happens here we expect the set clock to resolve, right? So we, we, we said that um, we don't even need to use this one. So we just do future set clock and uh, we poll and until it's, you know, as long as it's pending, we just poll and we expect the asset to, uh, the, the, the future is going to resolve and it's going to give us the value of millis between plus uh, between 60, uh, be between the uh, actual time minus 60 seconds and actual time plus 60 seconds. I have a plan to decrease that value though, because I don't want to allow for such a big error margin. Right. So that is on the set, set clock, but it's not going to build. If I, if I run it, it's not going to build. Let me show you. So I do PIO test and we should get a bunch of errors. Oh, hang on. Let's run it on node MCU v2 straight away. So yeah, you see errors straight away because we don't have uh, we don't have the implementation in here, right? But we're trying to do sort of TDD here. 
So that's not the proper way of refactoring code, by the way. I should have written the tests to cover the actual case first and then change those tests. Uh, sorry, then change the code and then change the test and so on. But I try to move faster a bit because I don't want the video to be too long, which is going to be long. I think it's going to be long anyway. So yeah, so we have unsigned long timeout and uh, we're waiting for the NPP time sync. You know what? I can take advantage of the logging library here if you want to debug some, if you want to get some debug information. So let's do something like this. Waiting for NTP time sync. And then instead of set on loop, this is where the, the, the this is where we're gonna have our uh, future, right? So we'll have return, create, and that's where I need to include those two things, right? So we'll have uh, create timeout future, and I will have just future HPP. So first one is create timeout future, create timeout future. Okay, and the, what is inside is gonna be create future. And create future is this bit. It's this bit. That's gonna become the polling function. And that is something we don't really need. We don't really need. However, for the create timeout future, right? So this is this is the bit on the timeout future. And this is this is coming. Uh, sorry, this is the bit for the create future. It ends here, right? And here we have the create timeout future, and we can pass as the second argument the timeout for that future, right? And the timeout is going to be exactly the same like the timeout millisecond that we that is being passed to set clock. So timeout milliseconds, okay? Okay. Oh, this is not the the best formatting, to be honest. Uh, ideally, I would change that. Yeah, let's see what I can do about it. Yeah, I don't like how this has been formatted for me, to me. Anyway, uh, we don't need on clock set. That is not the case anymore. Yeah, we see we still get time t now and we uh, we compare the now against the uh, eight hours, uh, 16 hours, right? In the in the in the future, isn't it? Oh, maybe it's yeah, it's probably and now um, yeah, we got the time info and everything we would like to have some debug information So this is not a bad idea to have something like current time debug F So that will be current time and this is the I think it is the long Isn't it? What is ASCII time? Uh, ASCII time is just char so it's S and the new line and that's something we can pass in here. So we'll get some debug information. Right. And the main change to turn this into a poll function is to return for the true. It will be async result time t. Uh, sorry, void and time t. It doesn't take any parameters. And that will be resolve. And we're going to resolve with now. That's what we're gonna resolve with. And the other option is just async result void time t pending. So this is still pending, okay? Nice, okay. So that's what happens. And that doesn't take anything because it's it's the it's the void, right? You see, this is the void. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That should that should do the job. However, I could add some extra information as well for the trace. This is where the trace comes useful. So we can uh, keep track on the now, right? We can keep track on the now potentially. I'm not sure if it's really required. Or maybe it's not really required. We don't need to have information about now. I'm going to remove it later, but let's, let's, let's do it. So we'll have some more visibility during the test. So I will do trace F and that's going to just be something like synchronizing time is and that's probably a time T is long, isn't it? 
Yeah, so that's gonna be probably it's L. I can't remember, never remember the the flag. So that is trace F and now. So we'll see. Okay, so that's the set clock implementation. I need to change the return type that is to this one. And the test is ready. So we can give it a go. We can give it a go. Um, but if I give it a go, the test is gonna fail after 60 seconds because the time cannot synchronize if the Wi-Fi is not connected, isn't it? So to really be able to synchronize the time, we need the Wi-Fi connection. We need the Wi-Fi connection. Has been done before that, so that needs to, uh, if there is Wi-Fi, if there is internet connection. And synchronization happens before, uh, synchronization has been done before timeout, okay? So we need to use, so that's why this is integration test, isn't it? So we need the Wi-Fi connector, Wi-Fi connector, right? And the Wi-Fi connector needs to be created. So let me have a look at this one. And we have Wi-Fi multi, Wi-Fi adapter, Wi-Fi connector in this order. So I should have started from the negative scenario, to be honest, so that would be easier. The test would, would pass right away. I could have, like, you know, just run them now and, and the, 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 they, they would pass, they would have passed. Anyway, so we have a Wi-Fi adapter, Wi-Fi connector, and I need the includes. Yeah, that's something I'm not sure uh, how to approach. Whether, whether the timeout should be, uh, sorry, whether the set clock should be self-contained because it's not really possible to synchronize the time if the Wi-Fi connection is not there, isn't it? But on the other hand, if this is more like self-contained with the, with Wi-Fi and everything, if you want to, if you want to run this without having to, yeah, I'm not sure what is the best approach. Maybe you can tell me what is the best approach on that, right? So set set clock, should it connect to Wi-Fi? I mean, it needs internet connection, so that maybe it should connect to Wi-Fi internally in here. But yeah, maybe I could do some overload in here. So set clock and connect or, or connect and set clock, something like this. Yeah, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I think maybe it's better if I keep it more atomic. If it cannot connect, we will get timeout. But we we don't we won't know what was the reason of the of the timeout. That's that's the main concern I have. Because I don't think config time is it can tell us. Can it tell us? No, config time doesn't tell us. Right? So yeah, so that's gonna be that is one of the of the thing to consider. But yeah, so yeah, what we've got here, yeah, we've got Wi-Fi multi, Wi-Fi adapter, connector, and what we're going to do is for that entire future thing, we're going to chain it. So we'll have Wi-Fi connector, uh, which is not here for some reason. I don't know why. Um, you know what? That should also be possibly here. But I don't know why it doesn't see Wi-Fi connector. It should be connect. And then we should do set clock. Right, the connect resolves with void. And because set clock input type is void, that should be fine, right? That should work. So we've got this uh, nicely chained. Okay, let's see why this is not, why we don't have a hinting here. There's probably some error somewhere. Yes, you see? What is the error about? Uh, no matching function to call async result void long int. Resolve time t. So, no matching result function to call async result. 
So it is the problem inside the set clock. Okay, that's interesting. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. So, uh, so yeah, we, we return this time t. And that's time t. This is what we resolve with. And now is time t. But what is time t? Yeah, time t is just this time t. And this is just long. This is long. So what's the problem with long here? We take void, we return. This is this is weird. Yeah, there's something wrong probably here with the Yeah, let me just refresh this and try again. So what we've got? No matching function for call to async result void and long int resolve. Oh, isn't it because of the oh I see, okay, that's that's my fault. Async result should look like this. Oh no, the bad formatting again. Yeah, it should look like it should look like the, like this. So now it should probably be built. Okay, it builds, but we have some issue here. Multiple definition of get level name for the Wi-Fi connector integration. Okay, it took me two hours to fix this issue. And then I spent another hour solving uh, a different issue with the set clock. And I have no idea what it was. I fixed it now, but I have no idea what it was. It wasn't just working. And uh, so I, I, I went like, at some point I had the identical test. There was a test, right? The integration test of, of set clock. At some point, it was almost identical to Wi-Fi connector, but it was still failing. So what I did, I did a copy paste from Wi-Fi connector and then changed the code and now it's working. Um, however, there was one change I had to do to set clock. So um, let, let me show you this. Yeah, I didn't want to like, you know, solve this on a video because that was, as I said, three hours in total, and that would be too long, way too long, right? So for logging, for logging, I just had to change, I, I just had to add the static in front of this get level name here and there, right? So that was an easy fix, it happened to be easy fix. And for, for the uh, clock, for the clock. So the, basically the issue was um, it the device just restarted the watchdog process on the on the on the device on ESP8266. This is a specific process that that checks if the if if the if the loop function in general is uh, executing right. It, it, a single execution of the loop is not too long. If it exceeds certain amount of time, then it's gonna uh, then it re resets the device, right? It just restarts it. So that's what uh, Watchdog does. And uh, for some reason, Wi-Fi Multi was failing with scanning. So at that point, when when you do when you run this Wi-Fi run here, so that uh, essentially that runs Wi-Fi Multi run, and that was failing. Was just stuck. And uh, that executed the, uh, that basically, that was making a watchdog restarting the device. So one issue I have um, discovered, uh, that was something I, I, I suspect it was uh, one of the reasons. It was here. You see, I, I changed the code in here. So it was here, uh, this bit, config time. If you run the config time before you connect to Wi-Fi, 
and that was the case before, for some reason the Wi-Fi cannot connect, right? The Wi-Fi cannot connect, so what I've done to mitigate it, to fix it, is um, changing set clock to changing the, the implementation. It was something I was considering at the beginning, if you remember. Uh, I was considering uh, set clock being self-contained, so connecting to Wi-Fi before synchronizing with the clock, and uh, it turns out this is required if you want to uh, if you want to synchronize the, the clock which is not it's not too bad it's not too bad to be honest because what you can do is you can have an overload for for uh, if you don't want to pass the pointer to connector there could be overload that creates all the objects all the required objects and uh, just tries to connect but yeah that that essentially uh, how, how this is how i implement it for now so this test stays as it is. I had to rename it though. So we have test is synchronize the clock if it can connect to internet. And uh, here it uses Wi-Fi adapter, right? And uh, sorry, a Wi-Fi connector. And I pass it as a pointer. I also added the disconnect at the beginning. S and the same thing with the Wi-Fi connector integration. So um, they like, you know, that makes them independent, right? They always, the, the, the tests start from the same state in the device. There is the same state in the device before the test is executed. Uh, maybe, you know, eventually I move this disconnect to somewhere else like the bootstrap file, but there's lots of things to figure out. Um, I also realized for the test runner on platform IO, you don't really have those tests in isolation unless you put every single test in a separate folder. So these tests I've got in here, the future test set clock, integra set clock integration and Wi-Fi connector integration, they are not really independent. The only independence they have is inside the body of the, of the test case, right, in this test macro, but whatever you define outside, it's just put together. It's put together, unfortunately, and uh, if you would like to test something really in isolation, like if it was running on microcontroller without anything else, right? So let's think about this uh, clock integration, right? So if you wanted for this to, to run completely un uh, independently with separate main function and separate loop function, then um, this structure is not gonna work. With platform IO. What, what is needed to be done, um, we need a new folder in the test, right? In the test folder, we need another folder. I could call it like, you know, test set clock or something like this. And then inside, you specify the file where you still need to, you need to run, you need to do setup, run all those tests, but then you have the full control. So you can, you have a loop and you have a full control. So I might have to do it especially for the Wi-Fi connector and set clock, like most of the code where we execute the execute the futures. I might need to do it, but I need to figure this out because it's going to be super tricky with the executor. Once I build this specific object that attaches the, the poll method as a callback to the loop, right, using the schedule function, the built-in, I think that is is uh, ESP8266, it's either ESP8266 or, or, the, or the Arduino framework function. So you can attach something to the loop without having to, without having to, without having to write any code in the loop. You can do something like that. But this makes it sort of like running this in the test macro. I did a, a small experiment while fixing those issues. And it looks like when something is just attached to the loop, the test finishes. And there is no way to stop the test from, you know, like to, to retain it, to keep it alive until something on the loop resolves. It's not possible. So it's going to be a challenge to, to figure this out. For now, I think this uh, while approach is fine. 
Um, this still allows us to this this for now this allows us to really test it in isolation thanks to yield that we can fortunately call in here so the watchdog is not gonna execute is not gonna restart the device I mean so that's fine that's good that's good um right I try to figure something out and for the executor I will I can test it in isolation as well right but not sure how to go about this loop function behavior and so on so there might be no tests for this one because uh, it, will, it might not be possible to test it okay but yeah let's continue with set clock integration so yeah so this test is covered and let me show you the new implementation of set clock because yeah that's changed so yeah connector uh, pointer needs to be passed we still got the timeout and uh, what we do now we return the timeout future we return the timeout create timeout future so that didn't change with the timeout milliseconds but inside that future is not just a single future that we create but we create a chain of futures so what we have is the connector connect right connector connect returns a future that is void void and we chain that future with first of all we chain it with the uh, function with the callback function that runs config time so config time is executed only once we are connected and after that we chain the actual future that does the 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 checks if if the time is synchronized because it's 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 not really possible to tell whether it's synchronized once one it's been synchronized for the first time uh, yes that's that's what i mean so you know the let's say the first time synchronization that's what i mean the first time synchronization is something we can detect we can tell there was a synchronization but for every next one i don't know any uh, about any way to do that if you know let me know so yeah uh, but this is really what we care about because when you want to synchronize with the time uh, you and if you are already synchronized there won't be a very big difference right between between uh, if if the the clock went out of sync because essentially it shouldn't go out of sync but you know probably i'm just talking about very edge cases when the device uh, is is working for so long that the time goes out of sync with the time server or like when the device travels to a different no it's not really the case yeah that would be if the if the device is sent to space right so we have the different time in space because of the speed velocity and so on but yeah I'm not, I'm not gonna go into this because for now I'm not I'm not building any any devices that's gonna be uh, working in space for now nice okay so yeah so that's what happens because yeah to create timeout future it can take a chain because chain still retains the promise there's nothing that stops us from doing like that doing this like that okay and uh, with this approach it is all working so um i have run those tests but i'm gonna do it again uh, and i think this is it uh in terms of explanation and uh, i can add the missing tests for the synchronization the only missing test is gonna be about the only missing test is gonna be about um not being able to synchronize and it's very tricky thing to do because essentially what needs to happen is yeah that's gonna be very tricky i can try though but it's gonna be very tricky um so yeah let me show you yeah i i just realized there is something missing because i removed the test case uh, the assertion that checks the result of the promise so we will have something like this get value and let's see what value we actually get so if i compare that with the millis let's see what i get because we, we should have a value very close to millis ah will we add it does it even make sense does it even make sense because millis is really the value yeah i don't think we can really test it because this is like checking millis against millis 
right? If you go down to like this, 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 uh, this uh, assertion, this is really the good value is is sort of like result from the millis. So millis still gonna be same like this one. So now I'm not really gonna go for this. We could do a check against the actual time server, but for that I need HTTP client. Something that could be done, yeah. Maybe I could do it later. So yeah, let's move to the next test. Uh, not trace. I also added some debug messages to Wi-Fi connector. You see? You're gonna see them in a second when I run the tests. So set clock, test it, times out, times out when the time cannot be synchronized, something like that. And what are we gonna do for that? Let me show you. This is gonna be a bit tricky. So. I will do set clock and pass Wi-Fi connector. But uh, is it really possible to do it? Um, I can try to put a very low value for the timeout. Very low, like 5 milliseconds or something like this. If I do that, there's a high chance it won't manage to do it, but that makes the test not non-deterministic. Yeah, I was thinking I could somehow, on the Wi-Fi connector, I could somehow disconnect it. But it is not that, it is not really possible. Yeah, because that resolves. I cannot ch change the internal uh, set clock. So not really possible. Yeah, what should be is rejected. Yeah, we, we try to uh, add zero maybe, if I add, add zero, I'm not sure, no, minus one, minus one is not possible because unsigned, it is unsigned, but if I pass zero, maybe could do something about it. Yeah, let's run it with five milliseconds, but I can try with zero. If I try with zero, I'm pretty sure that is gonna hit the timeout. So, so if five milliseconds is fine, I'm gonna change it to zero and I'm not gonna run the test again because that takes too much time. Okay, it is running. Let me put this somewhere. Come on, okay. Waiting for NTP time sync. And that seems like... Yeah, we should we should get a timeout when we didn't get. You see? Something's wrong. Sync... Oh, okay, that was the first test. Sorry, yeah. So that was the first test. And the second one... The second one also passed, so it looks like it is rejected. However, I've just realized if we put it at the beginning, so we make it the first test to run, there is a higher chance that the clock synchronization uh, takes long time, longer time. And I, I change this to zero. And now we should have, for sure, we should get rejection. And uh, let's add another assertion. So we want to do te uh, asset strq. And that is gonna be future result get error. And that error that we expect to get is the error timeout. I don't know what's going on with my ID again so oh this is because i don't have i don't have the timeout timeout future create timeout future so create timeout future where is the t t create timeout there it is so error time still not working error future timeouts error future timeout that is what I expect to get. So we, we will get a simple timeout on this one. Okay. Yeah. You know, that seems like with this uh, 
the error handling seems seems to me a bit unfinished i'm just thinking right now because we're not really able to catch these errors we could do with executor but there is some missing functionality for the errors ideally we would have something like or else and then we could do something with that error right we could do something with that error but yeah, I was thinking about it before and that's gonna be super difficult to do with C++ and types and metaprogramming. Probably variadic template arguments. So yeah, that runs again. Let me catch the Wi-Fi. Okay, synchronizing with the time for the first time, is it? Yeah, I never know. Was it? Is it? If it can connect to the internet. Okay, so that seems like... It runs, oh yeah, they cannot be synchronized already passed. So yeah, now it's gonna take some more time, but yeah, it managed to do it. And the Wi-Fi connector again, so it disconnects and connect again. Come on. Okay. Okay. So you see, that passed, and we have both cases covered now for the set clock. So set clock, I consider it done. Nice. Right. So what's left, what's left, what's left is the HTTPS client, isn't it? It is not working at the moment because I've done so many changes. I completely, I've completely broken the compatibility. So there is something that needs to be done. Okay, so first question is, can I run HTTPS client in isolation? Can I do it without uh, without, uh, can I can I just run it without the uh, ESP266 with the embedded environment? Could I do it on the native? That's that's the first question. So I could potentially do it if I pass the set clock as a parameter, if I just take it as a parameter. And for the Wi-Fi manager, if I take the pointer to Wi-Fi manager, that would be also possible. And the rest... Yeah, the rest is gonna be super tricky if you think about that because look, HTTP for example, let's say I create, oh yeah, I would have to create adapter and I don't think there are any virtual functions in here. I really doubt it. So let's say, let's see, client H and any virtual functions, no virtual, no virtual me methods, I mean, sorry. Virtual methods, no virtual methods, and does it inherit from... No. I see it, they have this as a convention on ESP8266, so there must be a reason behind that fact that they don't use virtual methods. So I can set my direction also to slowly get rid of the virtual methods I use and just replace them with the implementation, right? Um, so HTTPS client, I don't think it can run in that way. And that, that makes it even more complicated if you think about that. Because to make a request, you need to have a server. So to build an integration test it is possible. I would need to have a script, additional script that builds, that just, you know, creates a server, a web server on the local network. Ideally, that would be HTTPS one. Oh, no, not easy to do. For HTTP, easy. For HTTPS, more difficult because the certificates are not correct. Hmm. You know what? For this particular class, I'm not going to write the tests, not right now at least. I'm still aiming for, for having a coverage here, but let's just, um, let's just try to write it without. So we, we're going gonna, we're gonna to do a simple exercise and uh, that's also going to be the last one because I spent too much time already today on it. So I try quickly, um, Adapt it to the futures and I'm going to use the uh, paste bin as a target server and we're going to try to make a request. So I will create some sort of the test 
but just to make a request, okay? Just to make the request. And uh, and yeah, so that's that's how it's gonna be. Right, so let's let's just do it. Um, I'm gonna look at HTTPS clients, gonna start from here. So body stream stays as it is. Body stream stays as it, as it is. Okay. This is just a sort of uh, a, a adapter to the stream. Request builder, request that also stays as it is. Request builder stays as it is. Yes, and HTTPS clients. So what we've got here is a search store. We've got a Wi-Fi manager, which is not a Wi-Fi manager anymore. And we've got a timer that we probably don't need. Yes, we don't need the timer anymore. So I'm gonna remove the timer from here. I'm gonna switch to I'm gonna switch to Wi-Fi connector because that's how it's called right now. Connector. And that would be set clock. That's also still required, but it's a different file name. Event dispatcher. No, we don't need event dispatcher. Uh, I don't think it's even used here. It's not used here anymore. Yeah, and uh, read method, it stays. This one needs to change to the connector. Wi-Fi connector. And that will be Wi-Fi connector. Search store uh, needs to be renamed. Uh, yeah, except for this one. So I'm gonna need to change it here probably as well. That will be Wi-Fi connector. And that will be also Wi-Fi connector. Wi-Fi connector, Wi-Fi connector, Wi-Fi connector. Uh, that's that's gonna be changed anyway. Right, so search store here, Wi-Fi connector here. We take two pointers and right, so what we've got, we still we still gonna take request. I need to consider taking the pointer maybe, but yeah, something to consider. Uh on response, not required anymore, right? It's not required anymore. We don't have to do that. Um, the future here, the future here, this is gonna be a bit tricky. Um, we can just take a void as a first argument. Yeah, the input's gonna be void because that future doesn't need chaining, right? We don't need another future send, uh, you know, giving the this future any value. So void, but response is going to be and let me just quickly check what it was. Okay, there was just a response. So response is going to be the 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 result here. Okay, so we're gonna return a response. And uh, what happens inside? So what happens inside? Yeah, that's gonna be refactored completely. So we will have this Wi-Fi connector that stays, and we do we don't actually need Wi-Fi connector because we want to synchronize with the time first, right? And for synchronizing with the time, what I can do... Oh, you know what? We don't even need a Wi-Fi connector because we need to synchronize with the time. And synchronizing with the time itself connects to Wi-Fi. But, okay, I see. It requires the Wi-Fi connector anyway. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna take it as a function in here so so we will have something like std do we need to take it as a point as a as an argument though you know maybe we don't we will have a default one and a setter that can allow the developer to change that so that's what, what i can do but later on so no we, we don't we, we're just gonna do this so set uh, sorry, that's gonna be t uh, set clock. Set clock. Uh, I I probably need to rename this, right? Set clock is not the best name. Yeah, I later rename it to something else like synchronize the time or synchronize time, something like that. Because set set clock set clock can be misleading, and that requires Wi-Fi connector. So we have Wi-Fi connector, and we do. And then 
and then and what we going to get in here is what we're going to get in here is uh, I think we can just run whatever is inside this thing right so we don't need to could not we don't need could not connect to Wi-Fi ah this is something interesting isn't it this is something interesting because the way that worked before we just set an error on the response and I'm not able to do it anymore which is sort of fine isn't it I think it's fine because this kind of errors they shouldn't be on the response really this is when the whole operation completely fails when when the, there is no response because there was no request right so that's that's fine we're just gonna have our reject okay but yeah I need to figure out something about this rejects to to have something like you know um maybe a way to um, specialize this error somehow because for now it's just generic error it's hard to tell what actually failed okay so that is not the case anymore already covered set clock this is what happens that also is not the case anymore and we have this this whole thing here right with the client and everything yeah okay so unable to connect that stays okay so that's what I'm going to extract from here I don't need set clock anymore and connect is not required either so yeah, essentially what is needed is this bit that doesn't even have to be a part of that callback in here that is passed to end then we can have it as a separate method it's gonna improve the readability of the code so what we will have is so how's this code? This is send send request. Let's rename it send request, and uh, we can have something like we can have something like yeah I don't really want to do something like do self try to maybe try to send request something like this. So try to send the request. I copy all of this there. Probably that needs a response. Does it? Yes, it does need the response that we can copy inside. So that should be fine. Um, Hang on, hang on. I need to figure. I need to think about that because if I do it this way, then we need to have that HTTPS client alive. But yeah, we still need to have it alive. So yeah, so that should be fine. So that only needs a request. A request here. So we need to capture the request. Right. We actually capture everything. Right here, yeah, we captured everything, and then what we do is just to do this try to send request and pass the request, isn't it? Yeah, because this really is, is not a oh, I see. Okay, so we still got the promise, sort of the promise in here, so we need to return that. We're going to return it. That's gonna return, but um, this is not a promise at the moment, and it has to be. So I'm gonna create a future. I mean, I mean, I know I keep telling promise, which is not. It is sort of the promise, but I, I, I'd rather call it future because it doesn't work in the way the promises work, right? If you do create, if you do new promise in JavaScript this function that you pa pass inside I mean you have two functions that you pass inside you have the uh, I think the, the, this is called oh no it's one function executor that takes two arguments one is resolve the second one is reject this behaves differently so I call it differently uh, as well right so create future doesn't take anything and that returns the try to send request and try to send request 
has a type of async result response. Okay, so that's the that is the yeah that would be the the one. We can also have error. We can reject at some point if we want to. But yeah, so what we what what happens in here? So the client is created. The set store is set. The HTTP client is created. So that was the Wi-Fi client secure. We've got serial print. Shouldn't be like that. So let's use logging. Logging. Let's use logging. So that should be. So we got that and that shouldn't be like this. That should be just log uh, debug. So there is debug. What is this one? That is uh, that is debug F. Debug F. Right. Start connection sent HTTP header. Yeah, I'm going to keep this comment for now. This one is also debug F. Some formatting changes needs to be done, but I do, I do it later. And only response is the place that needs to return the value instead, right? It needs, it needs to return the response. So we will have async result response resolve, right? So that's how this is going to work now. And with the response. So that just needs to be replaced with that, with that, and with that. Nice. Okay. So that should return the the response and yeah this is it i mean print out the error message so this is the place where it can reject right this can be error f error f okay so error f failed and this is when i think this is this is what happens ah oh, no this is not the one that is error f because what is failed Fail is when the, we got the response, but HTTP code is, is... Oh, hang on, is it it? Failed error. Yeah, that's error. That's error. And what we can do is to reject here. But to reject... The response needs to... Yeah, that's that's a bit tricky, isn't it? That's a bit tricky because the error. Uh, yeah, I can I can essentially reject with error. That okay. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. So they're just gonna create an error with that message, right? So there is rejection, and this one is unable to connect. I'm not sure why I have. Hang on, which one is this one? No, it's the different one. It's this one, isn't it? Where you can't establish the connection, yes. So unable to connect, that's also error F. And we should have reject. And that's gonna be error with unable to connect. So that's gonna make it a bit easier to work with HTTP request with the HTTPS client, sorry. So now we can we can reject it, right? We can reject it, and yeah, this this seems like it's it's pretty much it. So I think I should I should try and run the test. Yeah, let's run the test. So let's uh, go to request bin. I need a new window. Do I? Oh no, maybe I don't. Yeah. So yeah, that was all my debugging here. Let me close all of these windows. Uh, yeah, I don't need that, 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 that. Right, and we're gonna go to request bin. And on the request bin, yeah, I'm just gonna create a new one. Uh, hang on, that's not the one I wanted to go to. Okay, the public bin, yeah, that's what I wanna do. Okay, so I've got my endpoint. And let's go, let's make it a bit bigger. So I've got my endpoint here. And what I'm going to do now is to try to call this endpoint. So we do some simple integration test. 
which is not really gonna be test because I don't know how to write an assertion, <laughs> but a HTTPS client integration dot cpp that's how I'm gonna call it, and from the set clock I'm just going to follow the same approach because that's what we need to do, don't we? We need to sort of initialize everything. Yeah, set clock is not really required. So this is the only thing that is required here up to this point. And that's obviously not a set clock anymore, but I'm gonna call it HTTPS client and just test it sends test it sends a request, right? Okay, so we've got that. Nice. And uh, HTTPS client, that's what we need. HTTPS client. Okay. And let's try to run this thing. So yeah, apart from the Wi-Fi connector, what we need is HTTPS client. Ah, and if at the end. You know, I think there is a problem with the code hinting because the test integration is not defined. So I'm just gonna try to do it here for now, remove it later on. So that should be now, yeah, that should be like that now. So we will have HTTPS client and that will be HTTPS client. And what we need to pass to HTTPS client, can we access it? Yeah is cert store and Wi-Fi connector and I can't remember now how to initialize the set. Oh, okay, I remember now. So yeah, the cert store is a tricky thing, isn't it? It is a bit tricky thing to do. Yeah, it's probably not that easy. But yeah, let's let's try to do it anyway. So can I do it though? Uh, I don't think I can do it because that requires the upload of the file. So you see, this is not even possible. Seems like it's not really possible to test it like that for the HTTPS client. I would need to, um, you know what? I'm going to create a separate folder here. Test a HTTPS client. And I'm going to just call it a HTTPS client. Oh, maybe I just moved the, the file there. Right. So that's what we have. But what I need is as well is this bit. So we will have our test, but also this bit. Yeah, um, is it really possible? I could try to upload something to the spiffs and see if it can detect it. But yeah, for that, I need to open uh, my old project. So let me find that project. That project was, it was, uh, hang on, open, recent. So that can be, for example, HTTPS file upload, I think. And then in the main.cpp, yeah, I can do little FS stuff and everything. So yeah, maybe that can run here. Yeah, maybe that can run here. I'm gonna move it back. Because it seems like it's more work to configure the new test folder now than just trying to run it here. I'm gonna need spiffs though, not really spiffs, but the file system, so yeah, but I, ha I have this covered. Okay, so yeah, the only thing I need to do is to create a data folder, not here though, so that's gonna be data, and I need those certificates to be, yeah, I can't remember now what, what the command was, so that was docker, I can't remember now, let me check. Yeah, there's cells from Mozilla. 
And what I have to do, okay, I see now. This bit in the data that should uh, return the... Ah, that is because I'm on the platform IOCLI. I need to change to ZSH and go to data here. Now, what's, what's going on? Oh, I have the Docker. Come on. Yeah, I need to switch it on. Okay, so that started now and yeah, let's go back here and run it again. Nice, okay, so yeah, I've got those certificates here. And let's upload them. So that would be platform IO and uh, quick access where it was quick access. No, the quick access that was here. It was not MCU V2 and upload file system image. So let's upload it there. And in the meantime, I'm just going to copy paste the code from the setup. So that is a little FS begin and that's what needs to be done. Yeah, I think it's, this is it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm going to show you in a second. Yeah, it's not much. It's not much, fortunately. So that's what we need. Uh, so, so yeah, that's what we need. The set store is though something that we have to initialize as well. So another thing to initialize here. Right, little fs begin. We want to finish that when it finishes at the end. So um, we go. Uh, maybe I just, I just, I don't do it. Um, and little fs, we need little fs here. Include little fs. Yeah, those tests are growing in size. Right, so HTTPS client, what does it need? It needs the set store. So that's why I have done all of this. So now I can initialize it with the set store, with the pointer to the set store. Set store, need to fix formatting, but not, not right now. And the connector, right? So Wi-Fi connector. There we go. Okay, so we have HTTPS client finally initialized here. Hopefully this is gonna work and it's gonna pick it up. I'm not sure how the tests are run on the in the test environment. If there is access to, there should be access to this file system on the board. So hopefully that is going to work. Hopefully that is going to work. And okay, so we've got an access point and let's just run HTTPS client, send request, and that is gonna be request create, is it build, sorry, that is build, I need to re rename this to create, request method, so that's going to be request method get, let's make get requests easier, and URL, it's not going to be any anything fancy, I'm sorry, and the URL is the paste bin one, right, so where is my paste bin, here it is. So there is the URL. Again, nothing really fancy in here either. Not sure why it doesn't format correctly. Ah, oh, because I have two. No. Okay, now it formats correctly. Right, and then we should get a response in here. Res. And that response, what I would like to do for that response is, um, you know what, I'm just going to print it out. So serial println and response, what we want to, to get from the response, just the body dot, can I do it? I should be possible, body string, isn't it? Can I get a string? read string that was read string c string right 
and uh, let's just print out res dot status code. Okay. Yeah, I'm running out of time. I might. I'm. I'm not time. I'm running out of memory on my SD card on camera. So um. Yeah, my face might disappear. But I. I really want to push and finish that that part, right? So you understand how this. I mean, so we have this tested. If it fails, then it fails. Yeah, but. It might not fail, <laughs> right? So we've got that covered, and yeah, now let's let's just quickly, quickly here do this bit with the yield, so we can have all of these nice things. Yeah, that's it. That's what we need. I'm not gonna do any assertions now. So we're gonna start this. Um, I need to go here. Let's see if it builds. Okay, there is something wrong. Fatal set store, no such file or directory. Set store bare SSL. Yeah, that's something we don't need anymore. And uh, we don't have bare SSL. We don't have bare SSL uh, here. So I need to go there and just copy that. Ah, set Storber SSL, come on. Let's add it here as well. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah, there is something wrong. So, something with the future. What is wrong in here? No matching function called for call to to void long int. Do we return anything except for the? Ah, we need to return that. Okay, that needs to be returned. That needs to be returned. So return, return, return. Okay. What else? I think there was logging somewhere missing. Yeah. Uh, again, there is something else in here. Function to call. Function to call future void int and then future void. Um, that returns a long int. Why it returns a long int? It shouldn't. Oh. Oh, okay, I see. This is the thing. Yeah, that's that's another improvement. I need to uh, add some termination in case of the... Uh, is it the... Yeah, again, that's the problem here. It shouldn't be set. Set. Set store. Yeah, there was a big mistake to rename all the occurrences of the set store. Right, and what else is here? Where you can now return a statement somewhere. Yeah, that's what happens when you when you in rush. When you in in hurry. Uh, and error expected token. There is something in here. Surprisingly, that is probably due to some. Some uh, where this was where this was actually executed here. Unable to connect. Okay, that is shouldn't be error f, just error. Right. And here, okay, we need a. You see, you, you see, never, uh, never, never be in hurry when you when you when you write code. Okay, that's what we've got in here. Anything else? Come on. Yeah, that is the worst kind of error now. So we have in function set clock. First defined here. Okay, I know this error. I don't know if this is the best solution, but by adding a static in here, I can fix it potentially.
Yeah, this this library is gonna need polishing at some time, at some point of time, right? Okay, now it seems like it's uploading, but I still don't believe this is going to this is going to uh, succeed. Okay, it is testing now, so we've got a set clock first. Oh uh, yeah, let me just wave this to catch the signal. Ah, you cannot see it, sorry. Another one, come on, synchronize time. Yeah, that's gonna be... Okay, okay, now uh, another one. So we've got our sense request. Okay, we don't have any CA certificate, so this is not gonna work. Okay, I'm a bit surprised now because, okay, so yeah, we see we've got the connection failed. We've got the connection failed error. Right. This is because there was no CA certificate here. And the reason is known, right? Unfortunately, there is no CA certificate. Um, yeah, I have an idea what I could do. And this is to create the new file here call it main.cpp and just, you know, define this setup function and loop function and yeah, just and just copy this, this what is inside that test integration into that main.cpp. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we can give it a go. We can give it a go. So yeah, I'm gonna need to paste the Wi-Fi credentials in here. So that will be, oh yeah, I'm just gonna do SSID or maybe even better. So that's going to be SSID and password. And let's define them in here somewhere, right? So define SSID, my SSID, and define password, password. Something like that. Right, so we've got this covered. We don't need gtest or gmock. And uh, I just try to compile it in a normal way. So we do that. Yeah, something is complaining about. SSID redefined. Ah, oh, this is because I've got SSID and... Okay, maybe I just call it SSID2 and password to because we have a clash of names. That's something I passed in the builds at the build stage from the platform io.ini. Okay, something also that is wrong, which is set store bear SSL. It's not apparently available in here. And I'm not sure why. Hang on. Set store bear SSL. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is from somewhere else. That's it tries to Compile the code on native as well. So that failed, but MCU v2 didn't fail. Yeah, that's that's a bit tricky. Like when you have the tests, now to run the, the platform to upload, sorry, to, to, to build it, you just need to do platform IO run. That's the best one. So from here, platform IO run and E node MCU v2. Otherwise, it's gonna try to build it on native need to find a way to not build it on native. Okay, so that 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 succeeded. I need to do an one extra file system image upload. There is definitely data here with the certificates. So I'm going to try again. And we'll see if we get any certificates that's been read once we upload it to the device. So I'm going to upload it now. 
and let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. So yeah, send request, build method get, yeah. Without executor, but you know, I think the yield should should do its job, and uh, so we can skip the loop. I think so. I can, but you know, I can always move it to the loop, and there just uh, pull as long as the future state is pending. I can make it global, right? Right. Okay, and let's connect to the serial monitor. Okay, I see. I see what I've got got missing for that again is serial begin and delay. The first thing that needs to be added in here. So yeah, let me try to deploy it again. But this time with the serial monitor. Uh, not here. Let me connect the serial monitor now. And I think I need to restart the device. Uh, there is no certificates. Why there is no certificates? Yeah, it's going to try, but it's going to fail. Um, for some reason, I don't have the certificates. Even though they are in the data folder. Okay, you know what is missing? Little FS. Little FS was missing and I'm pretty sure now if I come back to the previous if I go to the previous uh, I'm not gonna do it but if I go back to the integration test I'm pretty sure it can run maybe I will do it if this you know runs here if it runs on this environment ah hang on I need to stop it because that the change that I've done to to this platform io.ini configuration that needs to uh, I need to uh, upload the files again the file again so let's let's do it yeah it's getting late really late so my uh, productivity and uh, and uh, uh, the odds of, of of me making an error increases what's going on yeah, there we go. So, uh, upload file system image. Yeah, now it should work. Connecting the serial monitor. And uh, let's do the restart. Oh, okay, maybe not. Yes, there we go. We got the, we got the response, 200. And if I go to the... There we go. We have two of them. I'm not sure why. Maybe because... Yeah, this one is... It is from now. We have 11 o'clock p.m. Uh, let me just uh, restart. I'm gonna restart and uh, let's see how many requests we get. So we already have two. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, there is an exception here. Yeah, now it seems to be fine. I'm not sure why the exception though. Not a good indicator. Yeah, now it's not, not really any way to tell if the time synchronization happened, uh, like if, it, if it's still going or not, because I don't have any error uh, log. On that so I'm gonna restart again and try to get the faster time synchronization okay but by the way I haven't checked oh, okay that's fine what is it though uh... okay there is nothing right now and let's restart it and try again. So there's no request now. We should get exactly one request. If we get two, it's something for me to debug. No, okay. So there is an exception here. Yeah, there might be on the body though. 
because it seems like it managed to make the request. Yeah, so it made the request, but for some reason we've got an exception and this is not really deterministic because sometimes, sometimes we get exceptions, sometimes we don't. Possibly, let's see, maybe that was the indication of success and Yeah, I'm gonna restart it one more one more time until we get the quick time synchronization because that takes too much time usually. But we can get something. Okay, so now it tries to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, and we try to synchronize with the time. Yeah, that's already too long. I'm gonna restart again. Uh huh. Yeah, I just need one quick synchronization, so there is no... Yeah, there is no requests, so there is nothing in the background going on. But it's not how I, you know, expected something like this to happen, it's not really possible. Yeah, one more restart. It's a common case with the time synchronization to be so long. I need to try to figure this out with the... Yeah, I need to figure this out somehow. Maybe I uh, create my own NTP time server on my local network that is always accessible. Or oh, this might be actually uh, the device issue. So there is like a connection problem or something. Yeah, they, that takes way too long right now. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. And now I'm gonna just wait uh, up to 30 seconds. Okay, now there we go. So yeah, this one wasn't, it didn't fail, right? It was no exception. So yeah, so it's partly working, partly working. It is, yeah, and we got one request, so this is fine. Yeah, so as I said, this is partly working, so there is still, uh, I need to look and in, in, investigate what the issue is, why there was an exception, and what that exception was about, because it doesn't really tell. I need to set the filter, I need to add the filter so I can get the, the exception stuck in here. And uh, and based on that, debug it. But it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. It's probably due to, due to reading a, a response or something like that. So I wouldn't worry that much. Right, anyway, this is it for today. Thanks for watching. If you find this content useful, and you would like to stay up to date with my channel, don't forget to subscribe. The button is somewhere there. Just click on it. Cheers. Bye.